G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and welcome back to the Principles of Training. In the last episode you saw me when I went to Australia to uh, work with horseman Luke Thomas where he has a job halter breaking 150 unweaned thoroughbred uh, weanlings every year. If you remember back to that episode and the process that Luke goes through, the first thing he does is work on the foal's natural curiosity and get to where he can do something to attract their attention. And when he attracts their attention, he will go back around the other side of that mare. The second thing he does is he takes his hand and he gets his hand to where he can rub it around the mare and that foal that's on the other side will actually sniff that mare. And that's his first point of contact. So the third step in Luke's process is he gets to where he can lead those mares around and have those, those foals follow where they will naturally follow in that mare's flank on the inside of the turn. And then the fourth thing that Luke does is he gets them over in the, in the corner and gets to where he can approach them and put his hands on their face. And that's the end of the first day. Then on the second day, he goes through the same process, but adds one more thing. That's the principle of change one thing at a time. He adds a halter to them and then he gets to where he makes sure they can do, he goes back through what he did before with the halter on you know have that mare go around where that foal can lead up in there in its flank so on day three we just do the donkey kong principle and we'd go back through everything we'd done up to that day um, and you can see in this video right here this is putting the, the the halter on for the this is on day three it's the second time the foals had the halter on and you can see how here it, how easily it just slips on there and the foal's not really bothered by it there, my hand over here, see if he'll move, oh, he's not moving over, but he's leaning into it, so I'll probably just bring this hand up here, rub on him like that, hello little one, third day today, and look how lovely you are, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, what a love, so I'm going to take this little halter here, that on his nose, halters on, okay what I'm probably going to do because he wore that yesterday, today I'm going to hook this rope on here. So in sticking with the Donkey Kong principle, we've done everything up till, you know, we've been through everything up until this point in time, and then sticking with the change one thing at a time principle, then we go ahead and add the lead rope to the foal, and then all we do is go back and take a step back and lead the mare around, have the foal follow the mare without putting any pressure on the lead rope, and then after a while you get to where you can actually lead the mare and put a little pressure on the lead rope, and the foal will follow it up to the mare, and that's the they need to know the answer before you ask the question principle. Okay. So, I'll have mum come over here. That's what I was looking for right there. Mum's having a good old lick. And you're having a lick and chew too. What a good one. Because I hadn't done this before, I made a mess of it there for a while, but it, you know, if you could see in this clip here, it doesn't always look pretty, but if you take a step back and go back and work on the, the thing that got you up to that point, usually it's quite easy to get yourself out of a little bit of trouble. Back mum up here and there we go, have him come in. There, very good. Step back away from him, let me have a lick in the chew right there. So once you can get to where you can pick up on that lead rope and that foal will come forward and find that answer, then what you can do is you can just do it multiple times in a row like anything else. Once they can do it once, then you can start to ask for it multiple times in a row. And you can see here in this little clip that the Donkey Kong principle comes into play and there's one point in time that foal actually leaves and doesn't follow the, the feel of that lead rope. And instead of pulling on it and having a rustle, I just go back and get that attention the same way we did the very first thing the very first day. So lead, lead mum this way, so we can it, there we go, a little bit of a step right there, very good, pick up on mum here, 
see if he'll come forward around in beside mum there. Very nice. Very good. Pick up here. See if I can get him to follow mum here. Now he's not following mum. Let's see if I can get his attention. Found that right there sometimes to get him to look. Get mum to walk here. There we go, his hind end just rolled around, he really stepped underneath behind. Very good, so what I might do... So on the third day, once we got that bit established, that's all we did. It's the change one thing at a time principle. And you can see here, when I go to turn him loose, how easy this stuff's getting. He's getting to where I can walk up to him, approach him head on, take that halter off and he just stays there. All right, little. Okay. Yeah, what a sweetie. So in this little clip right here, you're going to see Luke the expert and show us how to do it. But what he does here is, you know, making the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy sometimes has to do with just the situation you place yourself in to actually do something. And in this case, Luke puts himself in a, and the mare and foal, in a very small pen. And so... Um, he gets to where he's walking around, and if that foal gets behind the mare, the where Luke's walking around to is almost coming in behind the foal. So the way he's got it set up really makes the whole thing flow really easily. So we just lead the mare forward, and the foal already knows how to walk beside mum, and it knows how to walk away from me, which if, if it gets slow, I can sort of get here speed it up a little and it walks more towards mum and then if I wanted to come down this side it knows how to move away from me already but then it also knows how to come back toward mum and again it's moving away from me but towards mum so that's this always goes smoothly this bit for me it does anyway and that's why I use it as one of the first leading lessons when I first get that halter on them. Sort of early days for this one. and It's not acting any different to any, any other ones that you'd do this with. Then you could probably start asking the foal first and then using mum as the enforcer or the encourager. So you'd ask the foal, you'd just let them stop. So the thing Luke talked about at the end there is the application of your aids and they need to know the answer before you ask the question. So up until this point in time, the mare, the foal will follow the mare. So he's asked the mare to move first and then asked the foal to move. So they need to know the answer. The foal's going to move in there anyway. We already figured that out the day before with no lead rope on. But then there's the application of your aids uh, principle. And now that the foal knows how to do that, that part and follow the mare. What Luke does, instead of leading the mare forward first, then asking the foal, in the end, he starts to ask the foal, and if the foal doesn't go, then he leads the mare forward. It's very similar to teaching a horse to go off your seat aid. If you can get your horse to go off your leg aid, okay, all you do is add a seat aid first, and if it doesn't go, you can always go back to your leg aid. The next thing that Luke starts to do with these foals follows the principle of don't go to bed angry. And I think all good trainers have a way of diffusing worry in a horse in their program. You know, there's different ways of doing it. But what Luke does here is something that he calls the hug. Now, I've never seen it before, but what he does is he gets those foals and just gets, puts a little bend in their neck, stands in beside them, puts a little bend in their neck and bends their head around almost under his armpit. So the head's kind of almost resting up against his heart. Um, I don't know if that's got anything to do with it, but once they get used to being able to do that, um, it seems like any time they get up tight, Luke can take a hold of them, put a little bend in them, put that head under his armpit right there, and it relaxes them back down again. And so this here is a perfect example of don't go to bed angry. Something that we'll do whenever, whenever 
we, if the foal is troubled or anxious and not getting the message or we just need her to settle a little, we'll just come in and bend her like that around our, our neck and it's, they, they go pretty much to sleep straight away. A bit like hypnotizing a chook and um, that's going to be our, our go-to place if there's any trouble, if we're leading the foal out outside and it gets troubled, gets bothered, it's not getting the message, and we'll just bend them around and hang into them there. So. so this next little clip you're going to see here will kind of blow your mind, but this is the first time Luke has actually tried to do this thing you're going to see here. And this is day four or five, I can't remember which, on a previously unhandled weanling thoroughbred. And just the way he's gone about things up to this point in time, it, it just follows on from the they need to know the answer before you ask the question. By the time you get to ask them to do something, it's like they already know how to do it. And we're on. Time my super duper quick release. Not like that. I'll remove the mare's holder. Just, just, she's a good old girl. She might stand there for the moment. I've got my foal caught now. We'll just start off where we left off yesterday the hug and that's pretty good there easy tiger that's a girl and straight away she's in she's just nestled down and relaxed into that and again mum's having a lick and a chew so mum's obviously felt a relax from there Come around, mother. Because I was beside her there, there's no drama. Look at that straight away. She wants to leave. We'll just bring her back, back here to the hug. Hey, mum. Hey, treasure. Back to the eyes. There's a lick and a chew. And um, just bring her back to the hug. Now the reason we hug them is to relax them is one reason, but then to get in here into this leading position, because up until now we've been away from them, we haven't been in beside, in beside them. So there we go. Um, now we'll let the head out straight, and I'll just put a little bit of a little bit of pressure on her with my hip, and off she goes, and. Houston, we have lift off. That's the, first That's the first time she's led, yes. So it doesn't take much to get her moving forward, just basically my presence here. Okay. So from unhandled folds, it didn't take very long because of the, the structured process uh, for things to start getting really good. And uh, this little bit I'm about to show you here, I actually filmed it with my phone on the morning of day six. This here will really blow you away. So this, uh, this paddock here is about 50 acres. And these foals have had, uh, today would be their sixth day of handling. And this foal here would rather come over here and stand with me up against the fence here and have a scratch than be out there in 50 acres running around. Here comes mum. Hey mum, how are you going? It's crazy. Hello little one. You're hanging out here with Uncle Warwick, aren't you? Oh, having a look at you. Oh, that's you just clapping at your mum. Look at you. Pretty special, huh? Yes. Pretty special here that you hanging out with us. Oh yes. Yes, little love. Look at you. Hmm? You could be out there running around with all those other horses and you're over here hanging with us. Let me scratch on both sides. Not just one side, but both sides. How's about that? So by now, as you can see, things are starting to roll along quite easily. 
And uh, this clip here is from day seven, I believe, and it's of me picking up this horse's feet. Now, I don't have the footage of teaching him how to have his feet picked up. I lost that footage. We had a computer crash. But, um, you know, Luke teaches him to use some of the, the previous tools. You know, that's the create a tool before you use a tool um, principle. And he uses that hug to help them pick up their hind feet. And you'll see in this clip here, you can get a, I was messing with this foal on the seventh morning, and you can kind of see how uh, Luke uses that hug to get to the hind feet. So we've looked at the galahs now. I might just work on this little huggy thing here. And what I've seen Luke doing with these horses by about day seven is just basically kind of, oh yes, you're a good little man. He's just basically going through all, relatively quickly all the stuff we've done up to that point in time. So he'll just lead. So I just put the little bend in both sides. He leads forward until the dog comes out from under the horse float and then he kind of has a bit of a look at it. Okay, I might just stop here. See how these feet are. Let's see your foot here, mister. Oh, very good. How's this front foot here? Get up, don't bite me on the microphone, please. Out there, under here. Pick up this front foot here. Back here. Out there, back here. I might just pick up this back foot, which I've already done while he was drinking. Put it up on my leg. There you go. Oh, you're a good little man, aren't you? Oh, yes, you're a sweetheart. You're a sweetheart. One of the things the breeding farm required of these foals was to be able to wear a, what we call a rug in Australia or a blanket in America. And so to prepare them for that, uh, we got them used to having a tarp on them. And we use the change one thing at a time and they need to know the ask the, they need to know the answer before you ask the question principle. And so we got a small tarp hole and, and I rolled it up and put it under my arm. And then I went in and did a hug. So I'm making contact with that foal and that, that tarp's under my arm. And then all I did it was just transfer the tarp from under my arm to rubbing on his side. It was already touching him. I just removed myself away from it, rubbed it on his side with it. And I got to where I could rub on him with it. Then uh, we got to where we could open it up just a little bit. And initially I opened it up a little bit just on one side and made it slightly bigger. Then I got to where I could open up a little more open up a little further and put it over the top of him. If they moved when I was doing that, I would just go with them. I didn't make a big deal out of it. Um, and I just, in the end, you could get to where you could open that whole tarp up on that foal the first time he'd been approached to it, even though, you know, a week ago they'd been completely unhandled. Another thing the breeding farm required us to do with those foals in preparation for uh, loading on a trailer was have them go over something on the ground, you know, like a tarp. So what we did with the tarp on the ground was you start out with it very, very small, twirl it up into like a thin rope and have them step over that. Then using the change one thing at a time principle, you would just make it slightly bigger, have them go over that and then make it bigger, have them go over that till eventually you could open it out and they were, instead of stepping over it, they were stepping on it and walking across it. And it didn't take very long doing that change one thing at a time for that to get pretty good with uh, most of them. And, uh, you know, it didn't take very long after that that Luke could actually get them to walk over it. This is the first day working with the tarp. He could get them to walk over it while having nothing on their head and him just walking beside them. You know, I've spent most of my career working with horses that have had a lot of interactions with people. And a lot of time because of those interactions with people, those horses had a lot of issues that had to be dealt with. And it was, it was really interesting working with those, all those foals, just so many of them. Um, all kind of so innocent and there was there was no human stuff that had been put in there and it was absolutely amazing working with them out there in what Luke called Lonesome Valley and uh, at the end at the end of the whole thing one day we'll just kind of stand there messing around and I videoed Luke saying something rather and we we're kind of having a bit of fun but there's also quite a, a serious element of truth in what Luke says right here. It changes you out there. Inexplicable natural phenomenon. You're not the same person when you leave. 
as when you arrive. Something that's hard to put into words. Yeah, there's just something about being with those, all those mares and foals that, uh, that does something to you. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching these last two episodes of The Principles of Training and watching uh, Luke's process and how that ties in with the principles of training. I really need to thank Luke Thomas for having me out there. It was, it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. It was very cool. So thank you, Luke. And uh, don't forget to join us next time, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of The Principles of Training.